I don't remember to be honest what they were talking about. Yeah. But sitting with those two was just so special. Yeah. And then to have him shift gears and say, you know, Willie says you're not half bad at this. Are you ready to work your ass off when you're old? And I uh-huh. thought, uh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with that. It was very yeah. cool. Very well, they, you know, that's that's the kind of stuff you need as a kid. You're yeah. 30 then. Uh, probably. Well, yeah, that's about right. When I got rolling for reels. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. talking to Duke, Duke Beardsley, by the way, here. And we were talking about George Carlson and William Matthews. And uh, just as kind of pre-talk, we're here about a meeting he had when he was young. And yeah. I got to sit old. in on lunch with the, with the Giants. It was <laughs> yeah. cool. That was. Yeah. Willie's been a very generous uh, mentor and friend for years. I yeah. actually worked for him in high school a little bit. Wow. A that's interesting. Firm. He called me one day and said, come in this weekend and help me do some stuff. I'll pay you a few bucks. I said, great. I was maybe 18. Yeah. And I think it was, we were loading paintings into a van to go down to his, like one of his first Nidra Matucci shows in Santa Fe. And so just to bust his chops, like, man, Willie, these paintings are great. Who did them? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but he had a really successful graphic design firm. And he's a, yeah. a big creative energy. So Yeah, he's an interesting guy too. Mm-hmm. And I've had him on this podcast actually. Great. But I think the most interesting thing is he's a brilliant painter, but he's also very good at business. Oh, yeah. He's got a great gallery. It's a, that's a, that's a two hats that are very hard to wear yes, for most well artists. Said. Yeah, exactly. and he's one that can do it. He's been a great inspiration on, on how to market, mm-hmm. how to uh, walk your own beat, mm-hmm. how to uh, learn from your mistakes, and right. don't take everything personally too long. Is this any any recognition? He told me this years ago. Any recognition, good or bad, lasts about five minutes. Mm-hmm. So don't get hung up in it and keep going. Yeah. So I re- he's been a great friend. Yeah, I think he's mentored a lot of people, actually. He has, too. Yeah. yeah. Maeve yeah. Eichelenberger said the same thing. Yeah. 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 In fact, she and I just laughed about that. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. He's great. Great. Well, so tell me a little bit. So you, you know, I was reading your bio on your website, and I was just blown away by the fact that you're fifth generation Coloradan. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm from New Mexico, and I know, and I'm not, you know, like first generation kind of thing. Right. But fifth generation, because Colorado is that. When was that? Like eighteen sixties? Well, that's the debate, right? Sometimes we claim maybe even a sixth generation, but yeah. nobody wants to own some of those guys. Uh, I think <laughs> so. Both sides of my family are old time Colorado, and yeah. uh, I think the the real er- earliest we can document was right when the railroad came. So it's more like eighteen eighties. Yeah, um, and. Uh, Settle all right. A lot of a lot of kind of more of the pioneer route. A lot of um, miners, yes, and lumbermen and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And then, but pretty quickly, ranching was always a part of it, and remains so today. So uh, everybody always had a job in town, a ranch outside of town. It's mm-hmm. an old old west model. You probably remember from New Mexico and Arizona. But um, yeah, so pretty genuinely five generations of us. And where were they? Where did they settle? The Beardsley clan settled up um, up. Above Aspen, near a town called Gothic, there's another town called Marble. Yeah, wow. That we just transferred. I think my uncle just transferred the t- deeds to the to the two mines to a, a nonprofit, a you know, conservation group. Yeah. And then my mom's family, the Newton family, settled in Pueblo, mm. opened a lumber mill, mm. and then quickly took it to Denver. And then they they spawned a bunch of business and and law and politics. And mm. my great uncle was the mayor of Denver. And, Oh, wow. That kind of thing. So uh, both sides have been around a long time. Yeah, that's yeah. They were successful too. Clearly, yeah. Good, uh, hardworking people, all of them. And I don't know that they were planning on having an artist come out of it all. But <laughs> I don't think anybody ever is <laughs> planning on having an plan? artist come yeah, out. Exactly. Yeah. Now they're just, you know, most. It's interesting. Most families are like, you know, don't do that. <laughs> right? And we're gonna find out if your parents said that too or not. No, but, they were pretty supportive. It remained so. I think there was some caution. You yeah. know, my dad was a very uh, hard nosed business guy, a developer, and uh-huh. in and, Denver. Mm-hmm. 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 And I think he he from Colorado Springs, but um, he and my mom settled in Denver. And I, you know, I think he they gave me this life. If you think about, it. I mean, they were modest but collectors of art and ranchers and business people in town. And so mm-hmm. they gave me this kind of dual upbringing that is very much reflective, I think, in my work and. So I think they knew and appreciated it, but there was also this kind of, yeah, she's should've, a business. Should have gone guy. to medical school, you know, yeah, that kind of. Thing. I did go to medical school, and let me tell you, it's overrated. Go into the arts. Out. <laughs> I bailed out. I bailed out. We do the art thing. Yeah. So, and what did your dad besides doing the business? What did his dad do? Uh, so his my dad was a commercial developer, real estate developer. Yes. And my his, my grandfather was a banker. I see. 
in the springs, ran the Exchange National Bank, did a lot of loans for cattle producers and yeah. was on the Pikes Peak uh, Cattlemen's uh, Board. And um, my great grandfather was a merchant and a rancher. And so mm. it just, it's a long time tradition. Right, in but our someone had a ranch too, right? Because you grew always. up on both, right? Yeah, always. So tell the, me that. My great grandfather's ranch was down in the town of Westcliff. I don't know where that is. It's uh, that? west of Pueblo. Okay. Another range over in, yes. the, in the, what's called the Wet Mountain Valley. Uh, I've been beautiful in it. I've part. hiked in it. Before. Great. Yeah, it's the beautiful. San Rita Cristo Range. Yes. It's gorgeous. And he, um, his my grand great grandfather, had a beautiful ranch there. There was a full day's ride from town. He was also the mayor of town and owned the bank and the mercantile, mm. but he. He had this beautiful ranch, and we kick ourselves now. I think my brother would know better. He's a ranch broker, but I think that now it's called Wolf Springs. It used to be called the JM, and I think they sold the Wolf Springs for like $50 million. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Who let go of that? You know. <laughs> uh, then my grandfather leased a big ranch in what's called the Hard Scrabble Mountains right through the Depression as a single young guy, mm. hardworking, good good uh, cattleman, and just loved the lifestyle. And then he settled in the Springs, raised a family, and worked at a bank, like I mm -hmm. said. And then dad, uh, they kind of, we had a cattle ranch kind of on a triangle from Carter Springs. It's about an hour, give or take, from both Denver and the Springs. Mm -hmm. And just a small cow-calf operation. That's where I grew up on weekends and holidays and summers, mm -hmm. doing all the ranch stuff we did. Mm -hmm. And then back to town for school and Little League sports and a suburban upbringing. Right. So it's kind of, I call it a dual upbringing. Very much so. You can choose how to spell dual. Yeah. <laughs> it's both. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, I grew up in ranching mm -hmm. communities. I wasn't a rancher's kid, but I spent enough time with ranchers' kids to understand what that means. It was funny. It was confusing sometimes to be so immersed in that life for yeah. whatever amount of time we were doing it and then load up. Right. And head back for town and, and sit in the hired men's driveway, you know, in front of his house for an hour while he and dad downloaded it's nine o'clock, ten o'clock. We gotta be at school the next morning. We still right. got an hour to drive to town, and so I always wondered why, why, why not just pick one or the other? Mm -hmm. But I couldn't be more grateful now. Yeah, I'm sure. Kind of gave me the artistically the path I'm on that I didn't even realize. Right, so, and it gave you a work ethic of you working on those with cattle and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah. I, I mean, I suppose so. Yeah, I, I'm oh, much sure. better at mundane, monotonous hard work than I am at, at intellectual <laughs> hard work. You know, <laughs> if, if that wire has to be stretched by Tuesday, I'm your guy. Yeah, but, uh, well, that's good. I gotta balance my checkbook. You know, <laughs> don't wait up. <laughs> so you did that your entire. Uh, life when you were growing up from like a little kid all the way to like through high school yeah, and stuff? So the, the ranch I knew uh, came into the family I think in 69 the year I was born and there had mm. been previous ranches but that was that was the one I knew as a kid and that was southeast of Denver about an hour mm -hmm. and um, again just a little cow calf operation and then a team a, a, a roping arena was built mm. <laughs> my dad used to say that's the last honest day's work anyone did mm -hmm. but uh, started team roping when I was about 13 mm. And maybe got good enough by the end of college and after college to really, you know, lose a finger. Mm. <laughs> and so I quit. Yeah. I uh, never was any good at the speed notion, but yeah. I loved to rope. And uh, so, um, yeah, and then mom and dad bought a horse ranch in the mountains uh, west of Denver. Mm. And then the old place, uh, I think by 1990, was gone. Mm. You know, so, Howard Post is a roper. Or was. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And that was always the big thing. Is he don't, missing don't, part of a digit? No, he isn't. Yeah. You know, he was all around uh, champion in high school here. Yeah, yeah I think we he, we talked about this once and oh, I, yeah. I admire the hell out of that. I, I never got anywhere near that good. He roped all the way until just a few years ago. That's great. And he was competing in Vegas, Las Vegas, you know, just a few years ago. You know, so, That's big time. That's I know. great. But he lost his, his horse got lamed out and yeah. so he's like eh, it's, too, it's hard on too, horses yeah it's too hard to get another one at this point yeah. and his wife howard's wife marilyn she wants to do some traveling too so. <laughs> good. i've met marilyn she's lovely she is yeah. see it's all she, good she is she lovely is. actually yeah. Yeah. so do you have other brothers and sisters i'm the youngest of four okay yeah, girl boy girl boy and are any of those in the arts no although i really genuinely suspect they all could be mm. um in different arenas uh, my oldest sister is actually a very talented painter and um could be doing this. Uh, and my brother is a really gifted writer. Mm. And my middle sister really could do a lot of things artistically if she's so inclined. I was the only one crazy enough to, to jump on the grenade for a career. Yeah. And uh, Were you interested as a little kid, like, you know, yeah. five, six, seven kind of thing? Uh, not as a career. I no, I mean, know. just, oh, yeah. were you the, the school artist, that kind of thing? I guess maybe. I certainly uh, daily 
was my process was to come home and spill it all out on paper. Oh, wow. Everything. Yeah. And my mom and dad kept a lot of that, so it's kind of fun to, to map it. But, uh, yeah, this is just drawings, how I've, I've kind of processed the world, mm. my life, my space in it. Did you win any awards in, when you were in, like, middle school or... I don't actually really know. Junior high. I had a lot of a, a lot of attention for it. That always made that me helps. happy. Yeah, no, that's the thing, uh, right? Sometimes it was bad attention. You're not supposed to draw on your final exam. You know that kind uh, of thing. Would you do that? Uh, actually, I spun it into kind of a skillful thing in high school and college. I would take these lecture courses. Like I took one on Winslow Homer at college. Yes. I went to Middlebury College in Vermont, and I convinced the head of the uh, art history department who taught the workshop, the seminar, that I would write a paper and enforce it with paintings, copies of Homer's. Mm. And he said, well, we'll see about that. And I, I guess I did him well enough. He was very uh, supportive and encouraging, gave me an A. So Yeah, he did. Yeah. And I started doing that in high school. Sometimes I had a great English teacher. I said, I think I could draw this better than I can write it. And she said, show me. Yeah. So always a lot of encouragement. And is that, I mean, that may be something that the way you see the world, really, right? That Truly. you're much better as a storyteller Truly. through your art than you are. In fact, I would verbally. tell you, I, if I am a storyteller at all, I learned to be one visually long before verbally. Yes. Right? Makes uh, sense. Just, and, 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 and you know, the artists that you collect and look at, the, the narrative tradition of Western art in particular, I mean, that hooked me early. Mm -hmm. And so I've been looking at, at storytelling visually my whole life mm. with real admiration. So I guess in that respect, the love affair was born early for sure. Mm. Yeah. And Dixon was somebody you liked right off the bat, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think my first real love affair was, was uh, Frederick Remington. Yes. I think my mom, I told my mom we were going to be, you know, mates. We we're going to be pals. She uh -huh. said, he died in 1908. <laughs> <And> I was crushed. <laughs> I think I moped and cried for a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, Cause those, those, painting of, of all of them right to be painted in new york after what maybe two three trips top to the west right but it something about that just hooked oh, me no, he so was hard fine. and then i you know quickly fell in love with charlie russell yes and then Barine and and of course maynard dixon and so uh, when you start to peel back those layers here's right. all these just absolute champions doing this stuff yeah so. and you were telling me and actually one of my friends was telling me about your the saying in the back of your studio yeah. share that one i love yeah, that share it with you of all yeah, people yeah share it with me <laughs> well, is, i like it this is a dangerous thing to admit <laughs> uh, to marks of let um <laughs> i have written on my studio wall in large blocky letters if i could paint like maynard dixon i wouldn't <laughs> And uh, I, people scoff at that. In fact, I, I think your friend was from the Tucson Museum yeah. was in the studio with a group this fall and asked for clarification. Yeah, on that. He did. <laughs> the clarification is it's certainly not a diss. Yeah. I consider Maynard Dixon one of my biggest influences, if not arguably my biggest, because, you know, as you know better than I, far better, one easily could say he's the first artist to approach the Western genre with a real modern art aesthetic. Yeah, I think that's true. And for me, that's that's earth shattering earth shaking yes. so he's one of these artists i think i mentioned to you earlier fritz shoulder Stephen corn yes uh, uh homer else? yeah i mean it really sergeant sergeant especially those yeah. guys they were so good homer yeah they were so good at what they did yes. and they changed the game and established a high bar so effectively for me just speaking for me yeah if i'm not careful they'll swamp my boat okay and tell I'll me what that i'll means. become derivative uh, okay. I will start to paint too much like them yeah. and not enough like me. Yeah. Um, the, each of those guys does it to me equally. If I'm not careful, I lose my way in front of their their influence. Yeah, I can see every that. Time. So comics have the same problem, you know. They don't want to go hear other comics because yeah. they're afraid they'll soak it in and you know do do a derivative kind of joke from that, not even realize they're doing it. Yeah. So they have to be really careful. Yeah, I got to be honest. I hijacked that phrase. That I think Ethan Hawke, the actor, did yeah. a did a film about a jazz horn player. Yes. And I'm, I'm pardon my ignorance. I can't remember who he was portraying, but someone, according to him in the story, said to that musician, "Wouldn't you like to?" play like one of the greats i forget who you know what right. play like the bird and he said no if i could i wouldn't yeah because i want to be me yeah and I, that really resonated you know the only thing i've gotten a hold of in this career in the last 10 or 15 years is i want to i want to be me and it, good or bad success or not no and it does it does show you can pick your, your you style. can you can pick your work out well i hope so that's yeah, no. good to hear yeah that's no i mean hear. it's true you go oh yeah that's duke's yeah, Good. I mean, yeah, no, Good. it's that's what we're after. So, and well, I didn't know it when I started, but I know it now. And that's what I'm after, right? Mm -hmm. So, all my artists, that's the most important thing of all is original voice. Mm -hmm. And then, then it's you know, can you paint and all the other yep. stuff? But yep. if you don't have the original voice, that 
and it can be derivative of something else but becomes yours, yeah. that's just fine. Yeah. And it probably will because, you know. If you're lucky, you, you, know, yeah, you get that chance. Yeah. yeah. But it'll be okay. It that's, also forced me out of my comfort zone of Western art I influences. Bet. You know, currently my influences couldn't be further from the West. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. So well, you can tread both worlds. <laughs> well, we'll see. I'm yeah, well, you are. for now. Yeah. 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 And so, when you left high school, you went. You you knew you wanted to become an artist, or you mm -mm. thought you did. Okay, tell me mm -mm. what you. When I you... went east to college, uh, yeah. to Middlebury College, studied art history and education, but um, no plans, no vision of that yet. Mm. Um, I had some great teachers there, actually, in studio arts, particularly of a uh, fine art printmaker mm. of some renown in New England. And his aesthetic and perfection was really, you know, just hit me right in the right place. And then uh, I got out of school and spent a couple of years uh, ski bumming. I was on the ski patrol at Steamboat. Started liking that world. I'd never really been in that role and taking care of people who were hurt. And I thought, maybe I'll be a paramedic. I said, someone said, why don't you become a doctor? And I thought, well, that's a cool idea. So I ended up at the Claremont Colleges in California mm -hmm. with a, with a uh, post-baccalaureate approach to the pre-meds. Mm. Did a full four-year pre-med in 15 months mm -hmm. and in anticipation of applying to med school, woke up in a cold sweat. Don't want to be a doctor. Yeah. And uh, really first kind of real big conundrum for me and a, and a dear family friend said, hey, before you run for the hills, you're in Southern California. There's a really great art school yeah. out there called Art Center College of Design. And yeah. just do us all a favor and go look. It's right. a, a great friend who's a designer in Boulder and, and, a, and a fishing partner, a buddy of mine. And he said, just go look, please. And I said, all right, I'll go look. And I walked to the door of that place and just pow. Mm. I don't know what this is, but I want in. You know, I want to be here. And how old were you at that time? 22? 24. 24. Two years out of college. Yeah, you owe that guy. Bigly. Yeah. Yeah. He saw it, though. He was a friend, too, right? A great friend. And he's a great draftsman and painter in his own yeah. right. And not that I consider myself either of those, but but he, he, he saw what I was trying to do. He understood yeah. what I was interested in, I believe. And he, he was the one to say, hey, take a look and he'd yeah. been at that same school back in the 70s on oh, the yeah. ford scholarship it's yeah the top out of my automotive design schools in the world it is so yeah. he said just go look and don't say anything you know just go look yeah and that's all it took yeah no it's a great it's yeah, a great i was mesmerized place. yeah loved I can, it i can imagine Climbed yeah. my way in i think it's uh it, it was great and it did well, you had to do something to get in because you don't you can't con your way into that well it's, i appreciate that i gave him a um full portfolio of what they asked for but it was all in the wrong context they wanted originals and i had submitted you know prints and, and photographs mm. so i didn't hear back and didn't hear back and i called them and said what what's going on and they said oh we've been trying to reach you we can't accept this mm. but you still got like another week <laughs> so i went to the art store and uh where were we i was in uh in uh, marin county sitting yeah. on my sister's couch and i went to the closest place with any supplies and bought a bunch of stuff went on her garage floor and recreated and told her portfolio, entire portfolio oh my god drove it down there turned it in i mean it probably looked like a crazy guy <laughs> turning in his receipts for his yeah, taxes right. and they uh, they said great we'll let you know and uh i flew to colorado for one of my sister's weddings and paced the house for two days and yeah. called on a thursday and said what 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 yeah and I said oh yeah you're in we'll see you on tuesday on Tuesday. Yeah, I did yeah. pivot, figure <laughs> out how to pull all that off. And you were about 24, 25 at the time? Yeah, I turned 25 that fall. Yeah. So Yeah, because you didn't really have a backup plan, right? Plan? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Still don't have a plan. At 25, you just, most people don't have a lot yeah, of Yeah, I just, it, the door cracked open, and it was clearly, uh, there was something about that. I ran right through it. I loved it. I um, poured myself into it. It was so stimulated by the teachers and I the bet. students, yeah. and the, you know, 14 disciplines advertising, graphic design, industrial design, photography, right. film. I couldn't get enough, but I was ready to leave. Did you figure out what you wanted to do pretty quickly or did it take a while to? Uh, you know, it figures itself out for me, I think is the way to say it. I, a lot of people would say, oh man, you're that guy who draws horses. I look around, are they talking to me? <laughs> There's no horses here. But um, I had a couple of really influential teachers. Ray Turner is probably my closest friend and mentor from that experience. Mm -hmm. He's just a gifted painter and teacher. And he kind of encouraged, you know, focus here, not out there. You know, do this now. Um, what's next will come. And then, uh, as he said, a, a gallery reached out towards the end of school in Denver and mm. said, uh, hey, you don't know my, us, but we know you and we know your family and we've seen what you've been doing. It's mm -hmm. really exciting. You want to do a show when you get out of school? Thought, well, that's a good reason to go home for the summer. Yeah. And I'd met this terrific girl and now my wife of 20 plus years and mm. thought, just too good reason to go to Denver for the summer. Was she a California girl? No, no, Denver. Oh, you yeah. met her in Denver when you came mm -hmm. back. Okay. Yeah, we'd actually paralleled each other growing up. So uh, just 
that summer just kind of cracked open. And I think that was the year I got into the Coors show and the Buffalo Bill art show. Mm. The doors just kept cracking. Those were pretty good pops right off the bat. I'm very grateful. Yeah. Absolutely. And is that, the, you just had a show at one of these uh, uh, galleries in Denver, right? Is that, the, is that the same gallery no. or is mm. it a This is a very decidedly contemporary gallery. Yeah, I saw it. It looked beautiful, beautiful online. Yeah. It looked like gorgeous. Yeah. You come to Denver next time, we'll go check it out. It's called Space Gallery, yeah. and uh, Mark, Mike Burnett's their owner. It's just fabulous. Yeah, and I've like done that. other events of his other, and he doesn't technically represent me, at least he didn't until recently. Yeah, And uh, I don't actually look for representation in Colorado much. Mm. I can do that on my own if I can. And, but he's terrific. He's a very talented, creative guy in his own right, and a beautiful gallery. Yeah, And this current style I'm working on just fit in there beautifully big and yeah, I saw it online. It was like, it was yeah. like oh, that's yeah. a really good gallery. Yeah, it's, <laughs> no, like, it's a great Nice spot. space. Yeah, it's, it's a really good, nice. good gallery. So. so you finish, so 25, you're 25 when you get into art school. Right? Mm -hmm. And how long does that take you to finish? I did a full four years in two and a half. So it was just 20, almost yeah, two. Yeah, you, you were committed. You were like. Yeah, and I didn't need the academics, right? right. It's a regular four-year yeah, college, right. but I had all that under my belt. But I did 14, I was it? well, I guess they break it up. So eight full semesters of studio mm -hmm. art. What do you think you took away from that, from that training? Uh, I think the first thing that hit me was the just the enthusiasm, right? These these, these motivated, driven kids from all over the world yes. doing cool stuff, and yeah. I, I could barely keep up, to be honest. When yeah. I first got there, I've been ski bumming for a couple of years. I thought, right. Whoa! <laughs> uh, but I'd had that year of pre-med intensive study, and so I I, I, I was focused and on just the enthusiasm. But then they started giving me things. You know, I really didn't paint at all, at least not well. I'm not saying I would paint well now, but I had no knowledge. Mm. So I learned all about neutrals, and edge quality, and all the concepts of painting were new to me. And then drawing had been hammered in. Mm -hmm. You might have a little bit of talent, but you got a long way to go. And so those relentless hours in the figure drawing studio, yeah. and all the challenges, and then perspective and color theory, and that stuff was really gold to me. Mm -hmm. um, I knew a lot of it. I studied a lot of it. I taught myself a lot of it, but I didn't have it at that level. Yeah, it's not the same. And then they taught us a little bit about some business and then kicked us out of the door and said, go get paid to do this. <laughs> this is a real thing. Right. Don't take it lightly. And uh, most of my classmates are total superstars in their own right now, you know, uh, in the entertainment and commercial design, all this stuff. Yes. Yeah, so they, they put out a lot of the top. They really people. do. Yeah. And it was just such a thrill to be there. I just, I, I think I spent right up to the last week, I just said like stars in my eyes. Couldn't <laughs> believe I was there. Thrilled to be there. And then by the time I got kind of jaded, they were like, well, you're done. Now get out of here. Yeah. You know? so, <laughs> and what were you doing? What did you come out kind of? What was your style at that time when you came uh, out? That's a remember? fun question. I I think I was impulsive, um, driven by my own reaction to the subject matter, um, and kind of in a water, wonderful way, kind of in a desperate hurry to try to get this stuff. You know, I've drawn all the time, none of it very well, but I had this show coming. Mm. So that kind of forked focused me a little bit forced me to settle down and think about well, what are we going to do my first show i forget we we put up 50 things i don't know drawings in home frame stuff in my right. parents garage and right. this was a mess uh -huh. and sold it all and thought well now wait a minute this is kind of cool yeah wow. that's amazing yeah. and that was at the gallery the mm -hmm. yeah. a wonderful dealer in denver who really specialized in like the old broadmoor school and, yes but she gave a lot of young um artists, up and coming artists are kind of our first show, mm. two or three of my friends that we got our first shows there. And it was just a, let, let's let Denver support one of Denver's own. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize what a lucky stroke that was. I do now because yeah. Denver, then Colorado, then the West in general, just kept embracing what I was trying to do. And the luckiest thing I ever did was move home to start that off. So, And was that a modern sensibility of what you were producing at that I, time? I think so, more than I realized at the time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the influence of, of Dixon was and shoulder yes. those guys were really turning my head mm -hmm. but also going out to big ranches that i've been going to most of my life or uh friends of friends with big ranches i got invited to a branding at a friend's ranch in nebraska out in the sand hills we've been buying horses from that family for a lot of years mm -hmm. and i i got there on my own terms and no one else but me and my cameras and i rode with the crew and took a ton of photographs and got down through a rope and dragged calves to the fire and was like this is super cool mm -hmm. and i kind of thought i was gonna be a landscape painter maybe and right. then that changed everything. Uh, that one trip. Kind of. I, I'd been drawing it my whole life, but then I, I got back from that and it just, I couldn't stop. You know, like I'd, I'd look through those days. I didn't shoot a contact camera or a digital camera. So I'd make contact sheets mm -hmm. out of the film because it's cheaper. Right. So I'd have to go through the loop and look at all these tiny photographs. And all I could see was these 
gestures of horses under bit pressure right. and riders shifting their weight to get their shoulders opened right. up and coils moving. And I thought I couldn't draw it fast enough. Right. So it, I think it started to form itself. Um, my love affair. I've always loved the cowboy icon, iconography, history, right. lore, legend. Right. Here I was watching it, being a part of it. Right. Big ranches, big working ranches with the mythology outside of the world. It's like, oh, this is a dying art. Like, no. No, it's still it's there. It's quite fabulously yeah. alive and well. It is. And evolving beautifully in many respects. Like plenty of challenges. But I just found myself in the middle of something that really made sense. Mm. And it afforded me a lot of time in the saddle, which is great. That's where I'd rather be most of the time. And so when you took that trip, you were about 30 at the, was that when that happened? Maybe? Yeah, I think I was right out of school. So I think yeah. I was about 28. Yeah, okay. So it was And I'd been going to brandings and things, but not with a camera and a sketchbook. Right. I learned quickly, despite our... our discussion about Maynard Dixon sketches, I learned quickly asking those guys to hold still is a fool's errand. Yeah. So I, I adopted the, the camera quickly. Yes. The digital was a huge changeover for me. Shoot hours of video and right. thousands of stills in the morning and still be able to get up when they tell me to and, and throw a rope. Right. And work. Help out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mug calves. All, and do you, do you still do photography and go out in the field? I do. It's, it, I'm a horrible photographer. But yeah. my photography is a great, you know, uh, somebody got a hold of me early and said, always shoot your own reference. Yeah, I think that's smart. Oh, boy. So I just, I have a love affair for it. And that those sequential movements with the speed of modern day digital cameras right. or even breaking up a, a video, I just love to watch horses and riders move. Probably mm -hmm. my most cherished thing to watch, especially how horses adjust to the weight of a rider doing something else. Mm -hmm. I just love that. Mm -hmm. um, can't get enough of it. We'll watch it all day long. Um, so I just started doing it. Yeah. You must get people that are riders and Western people that really know horses that go, Oh, you got it right. Gratefully. I do. I yeah. appreciate that. I, my favorite is someone who, who lives the life every day, uh, who, who's multi generations of it. And they say, man, uh, everything about that's right. Well, why the hell did you paint it purple? <laughs> yeah. I mean, cause that's the thing. I mean, your paintings could easily not have that in it. Mm. You know, they could, it's funny. I guess, I guess I never thought of that. I guess they could easily not have it. And increasingly, yeah. they, they don't have it as much. We're yeah. changing some stuff or pushing some things. But when I'm painting the working cowboys and cowgirls, that stuff will always matter to me. I may mm -hmm. not give you all the fringe and all the buckles. Right. I'll give you gestures of them. Um, for me, if I, you know, by taking the narrative, the literal narrative out of Western art, which we all love so much, mm -hmm. by blurring the line a little bit, I think I'm inventing you the chance to tell the story. Right. And I think story's inherent to it. It's so important. So my job is to give you just enough to get out of your way. And then you and the painting have a relationship. Yes. As long as you're together. Yeah. Dixon continued to modify and simplify as he went on in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He mm -hmm. just got rid of things and changed. He was completely doing that. I think most really serious artists do that. I see yeah. it. Yeah. Even if it's Ed Mel, who's... You know, I just saw something in his studio the other day he did. It was like insanely amazing. And, nice. And it was completely just abstract to a different level. I was yeah. like, still yeah. working on it. People ask me all the time if I'm getting abstract. And I don't think I am. If anything, I'm getting more expressionistic. Because mm -hmm. you can still tell what you're looking at. I'm yeah. Not, I'm not taking this all the way out yet. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, I, you know, we in our world, we hear it all the time. Keep it simple. Less is more. Ray Turner said something fabulous when I was getting out of school. He said, learn the difference between precious and essential. Mm. And you got to let that bake. He didn't explain yeah. it. He walked away. Like, yeah. Hey, Ray. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. I need some more of that. But it, it's been a great lesson to just what what matters mm -hmm. and what can I not live without? You know, it's kind of a cool way of looking at it. Yeah. It's hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a writer, you know, you can't get where you fall in love with your words. You know, you have to be mm -hmm. able to let them go. Even if you write something really what you think is good, if it doesn't help the the story. Yeah. Well, then it's just for you and what really is, not for the story. What did they say in Scarface? Never get high in your own supply. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> you start loving what you're doing, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. So when you, uh, so you have your first Denver gallery, mm -hmm. then you go to, you start with the Coors show, which you're still doing. Right? I actually haven't showed with the Coors show oh. for a handful of years. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. It's time for a change. It's yeah. all good. I love I, that show. I get it. Yep. And then um, what, what was your next I, uh Ideation. Where did you go? What was your next gallery that you did? So well, that, when you're in your mid thirties, kind of thing. I think right after the, right after that first year, which was two thousand one. Is that right? Yeah, two thousand one. So that was Coors and Buffalo Bill at the same time. Yeah. And then galleries start calling. Yeah. And 
uh, wisely, unwisely, you make the decisions you made. I made some really lucky decisions, and two of them were with me a long time. One's still with me today. So I started working with Mark Tarrant, yep. which originally at Mountain Trails and then obviously now at Altamira. Mark's been a great friend and partner. And then I worked with Nikki. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunling originally now Todd, right? And Nikki at Visions West for years. Those guys are great friends. Her husband, Jeb, and I grew up with them in high school together. So two really good I mean, yeah. Between the two shows that let me in, and I, you know, I owe Rose Frederick and uh, Sue Simpson yeah. great debts I'll never repay. Uh, and and then those two first two galleries yeah. kind of saying, look, we know you do this your way, and it's a right. little different. We love it. Go do it. Right. In between all that, I had a gallery in Denver, a really lovely, famous gallerist in Denver named Tom Carson. Mm -hmm. The Carson Gallery in Denver. Mm -hmm. He was big in the 80s during the oil booms and part of the Bev Do Little crew. And right. Wonderful guy, you know, and he had a show for me uh, early on after that d those first Denver shows, and um, I'll never forget. I we were newlywed with our first house, it had a studio over the garage, maybe a baby, you know, n no plan, right? Right. And he showed up one day in the yard, <laughs> and uh, he was just lovely, and he had he hands me a check, and I said, "Ooh, cool!" It was you know, it was like fifteen hundred dollars. Like, right. oh my god, he said, "I saw the painting for you today." Yeah. And I said, "Wow!" And he said, "So oh. pay your mortgage and buy some more supplies and get back to work." <laughs> and that was Tom. Yeah, you know that was his whole ethos yeah. of how to be supportive of young artists, and uh, they'll pay me. Don't worry, this is a check from me to you, so you can keep doing this. Yeah, and I just adored Tom, yeah. and so those kinds of experiences, he's lucky, he run through that cracked door. Yeah, it can happen the other way too, unfortunately. Absolutely, and yeah. you learn that. Yeah, and I would never name names. There've been a couple experiences that haven't been very positive, and, and I've even put too much heat on good experiences. So you learn. Yeah. I think it's always important for artists to talk to other artists to find out about galleries. I should have called everybody. Yeah. I came over here. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> no. Well, this you don't have to worry about yeah, too yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, but it's true. I think it is helpful to, if you're going to go into business with yeah. someone, yeah. you know, and that's what you're doing when you're an artist, and it could be a lifelong business, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So it pays to try to get it right, just like a, you know, a marriage. And yeah. sometimes it can go very well for a long period of time, and then whatever, you know, you outgrow yeah. each other, something happens mm -hmm. and that's it. So I, I couldn't agree more. And, and it's a great resource in this world, in our little community because no one else has that experience. Right. Yeah. I met Logan once, well, the one year he showed at Coors. I don't, don't know that story, but I, I met him and liked him immediately. I always liked his work. And then I had a gallery show some interest and he was on their website and I called him up. I got the skinny from him. I mean, it's just the stuff that we have access to. That's right. It's really rich. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as a physician, if I'm going to go and get some procedure or something done, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk Shopping, to the other docs. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I say, okay, is this guy, you know, how is he? Yeah. He or she. Absolutely. You know. And but also, you know, what a unique time in the world, I think, the last 20 years and here two, four maybe, uh, in terms of what the internet's done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? We're the first living generation of artists, whether you're eight or 80, with real-time global access. I think yeah. What would, what would Gauguin have done with that? Of Picasso done it's that. hard to know what right? it would have been yeah no, so it really is. embrace that too yes um, it's just been a wild fun ride yeah what is, give them your website though I've been to it yeah dukebeardsleystudio.com yep. an Instagram account mm -hmm. same yep. same Duke Beardsley Studio yep yep staying on brand yeah, <laughs> yeah. no it's important <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely and um, and how is how has that helped you do you think immeasurably really I mean I think it gave me the confidence to the internet especially the social media platforms yes to be myself mm. and to learn from the mistakes and to uh, take the extra time and energy to do it, you know, where you're not represented mm -hmm. or when you want to do it on your own, like have the courage to give it a shot. Yeah. You know? uh, luckily there are a lot of great galleries out there when, and if you need that platform or the, right. that endorsement, absolutely. But I think the courage to try it on your own too. Yeah. No. And there are advantages and disadvantages absolutely. for sure. Yeah. Um, and I, I people all the time say, "Oh, galleries are a thing of the past." Nope, no, couldn't agree more or disagree more. Yeah, but there's another niche now. Yes, and we talked about Bill Ray earlier. Yeah, that was a friend at home, and, and it doesn't represent me, but has showed a lot of support. And yeah, Bill will do that. And he came up at one of the events sometime at one time and said, "I've been watching what you're doing on here, and I love it." Yeah, I'm like really? Uh -huh. He said, "Adapt or die." Yeah, you know, he's it's no, great. it is true. Yeah. Yeah, for gallerists, if you don't have a good website and social media presence, you know, you're in trouble. Well, I think you're, we're all both in trouble, too, if we can't share back and forth. Yeah. You know, and that's what Mark right. has been so fabulous about, like, not threatened by me having my own scene yeah. in Colorado. Supports yeah. it. Yeah. Loves it. 
and Courage. quite frankly needs to. Yeah, and vice versa, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it should be a relationship. It should be a partnership. Always. I think for some gallerists, they really get very concerned about you know if you're the artist is selling on their own web or doing whatever, mm -hmm. and that's fine, and you can try to control it, but it's I think it's almost impossible. And you're gonna make mistakes. Yeah. I've certainly made a few, and you're going to learn some lessons, and they're going to make mistakes too. Yeah, that's where communication not comes take in. ourselves too seriously. Yeah, communication. It's you know, if paramount. something happens, just go. Let's talk about it. Let's and I think you it. need to be friends. It helps. I think you do. Day. At least have appreciation for each other on a friend basis. You yeah. Know? Well, it's actually for me and my gallery. One of the also one of the most important things is do I like the person? Mm -hmm. Because you know I'm going to be trying to support his family and, mm -hmm. and or her family and. I'm going to spend a lot of time with them. And mm -hmm. if I don't care for them as a person, even though they may have some of the other things that are really good, mm -hmm. it, for me personally, and I'm, I think I'm maybe in the minority in this, I'm like, yeah, I just don't think it's going to be a good fit from that. It certainly worked point. for you. It has, right? and it's made my Testament. life a lot easier. Yeah. And I can, you know, I have good relationships with my artists and we can talk. And, and because I know that mm -hmm. starting on, you know, from day one. Yeah. You know, and if they don't, if they have a problem with me or my personality or my style, it's going to be problematic anyway. So I think it's key. Just don't you go know, down that road. I've been really lucky to be friends with all the galleries I work with, and it's key for me. Yeah. Right. You got to be able to trust each other. And that's true. Even when you screw up, you yeah. got to be able to forgive each other and move on. No, that's true. Some of my best friends actually are my artists. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Which is, yeah, that's what I spend time with them. Yeah, <laughs> <In> fact, exactly. <laughs> that's yeah. why I probably do these podcasts because I enjoy spending time with artists. Too. I love it. Well, they're their own. You're a unique breed. Crazy? Is that the word, maybe? Fear, fearless. Oh, really? Good. I like that. I think you have to be fearless to you be You have ours. to be able to be, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And idealistic to some extent. Yeah. Every once in a while, I lose that courage. And uh, and it's as uncomfortable as that can be. You know, I've got two kids. One's in no, college. I get and it. There's a lot riding on this. But, you know, I kind of sometimes try to embrace that and say, yeah, I'm glad this is freaking me out. Yeah. That means I still care. Yeah, and crawl out the next day and, and yeah. clean up. And if you can do something better and do something different, you know, yeah. amen. Otherwise, just keep scratching. You have to. Yeah, I don't care where you are in the food chain. No. You know, that's the truth, right? My dad yeah. said that one time because I was complaining I didn't have any guarantees, and he said, "Who does? Yeah, you know, my, my name has been on the masthead for forty years. You think it stops? Yeah." And he yeah. said it. He stopped, <laughs> and then he goes, "Actually, I think you do have the only guarantee I've ever heard of." I said, "What?" He goes, "If you don't paint it, I guarantee they're going to buy it." <laughs> yeah, you're not going to eat. Yeah. Is what it yeah, is. Shut up and paint. <laughs> yeah, it says that on the easel now. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true, and it's a great uh, responsibility for dealers, the ones that take it seriously too, because mm -hmm. we know, you know, no braces potentially or right? whatever. Right. It's back to Tom Carson. Yeah. Right. All you guys who've done this a long time, you. You're committed. It's important. Oh, yeah. We have to be able to count on you, too. Right? Oh, no. And the good dealers recognize that. Absolutely. And feel it. Yeah. They feel the pressure. Trust That's me, I feel It's a remarkable business, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's really a very unusual business. Very yeah. unusual. Yeah. yeah. No, it's one that... Uh, there's nothing quite like it. I don't mm -mm. think. Maybe, Not that the, I've seen. maybe the diamond business might be kind of like it too, in some weird way. For if you have working with jewelers and yeah. different things, I don't luxury know. cars maybe, but that's corporations. But that's right? yeah, it's it's a most of the art world is at least especially in the Western art world, yeah. it's kind of mom and pops. Yeah, Enzo you know? Ferrari days are behind us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. I hadn't thought of that. I like that. So what kind of things do you have coming up now? What kind of uh, shows do you have in the future? Um, my next event is with Mark here in, in uh, Scottsdale yep. in March. And uh, he's been really fun. I get to kind of stretch my legs a little bit. And um, although I think what I'm going to put out or what I'm working on for him is is in vain with what I've been doing since COVID, which is really trying to loosen up back to that idea of mm. cutting some things out. Yeah. Catching more of a, um, or looking for, I should say, uh, striving for more of a uh, an energy mm -hmm. than a perfect representation, mm -hmm. and, and just getting started with that. So a lot of um, loose movement, um, a lot of breaking down. So my influences right now are kind of uh, outside the Western genre. I've been mm -hmm. um, I've been looking a lot at uh, Jean Michel Basquiat. Oh yeah, which. Uh, as a whole, I don't know, but I love his freedom. Oh, his yeah. image of making freedom was so yeah, intoxicating, yeah. right? It's like shoulder, right? Yeah, it is. Um, it's fabulous. fabulous. Art mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Uh, Klimt is one of my yeah, new yeah. junkie addicts. I just yeah. can't get enough of Klimt. Zooming in on his stuff. Yeah. Uh, with all due respect for Monet. 
Yeah. I think you were just warming us up for Clint. Uh, you know. Um, just didn't live long enough to I show know, us everything right? he had. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, Jasper Johns. Yeah. That's an, a regular one lately. I can see that, actually, for you. My studio manager, Della Pattison, gave me a Jasper Johns. Uh, the You know, he just had the two shows in Philly, New yeah. York, and she went and got it. She gave me the catalog. And, yeah. Oh, my God. It just shook the snow globe so hard. I'm still spinning. From yeah. It. You know, I love that. Uh, so, you know, kind of a... Um, impulsive collector of influences so what's coming i don't know i got um a lot of work luckily that my, my commission list is long good i'm grateful my clients are very patient very understanding amazing people this is a bit business people business yes. right so i'm grateful for that and uh, a couple fun commercial things coming up oh good i might even uh, i'm not a i'm not a um, commercial print guy i don't make uh Giclees out of my paintings. Mm -hmm. Just my own personal taste. But I understand and appreciate what that market can do for artists. So right. we're actually looking at putting my photographs to work mm. and see if there's a niche there. Because uh, as bad as they are technically, they can make great images. Mm. So uh, just a couple of things coming up. Mm -hmm. Shaking it. And then just continue pushing the envelope as best I can. And you like to paint big. I right? do. I yeah. love to paint big. And why is that? I mean, I like big. I always, my favorite are big. I've yeah. Always, I and, love you know, big. and you know, you sell more than most. It's a tough, it's a behind the goal shot. Yeah. It's a low percentage shot, but I've been lucky with it. I, I something about the girl, the scale of the subject. Mm -hmm. And for those of us who grew up little kids in a growl under working horses, mm -hmm. there's this crazy energy. I mean, I was terrified of that stuff till right. I was old enough to do it. Yeah. Smart. And, actually, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Self-preserving maybe. Yeah. But I just, I love big striking Western paintings. Yeah. I just love them. And gratefully, I think there's a niche for it. And you're not going to sell one to every household, No, but they're really fun to do. And it, it sounds ironic maybe, but I find the intimacy of a big, like on a ladder, 10 foot tall, big mm -hmm. drawing as close to a sketchbook as I can get. Mm. It's different, but it's really very similar. And I'll be up on a ladder and thinking, is this working? And get down on the ladder and back off 20 mm -hmm. feet. And go, oh God, no, that's not working at all. Mm -hmm. But I love that. It's how I draw scale. I don't erase. I just work through a mistake. Mm -hmm. Like Dixon writing short in yeah. that leg. Oh yeah. Those influences were really powerful yeah. to me. So I'm, I'm not afraid to screw up. So yeah. I like painting in front of people. It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. I love it. Well, he would, Dixon would do little drawings, you know, two by three that would turn into 30 by 40s. Right. And they'd look similar. Yeah. Very similar. And I might, maybe I'm going reverse, but, but his influence has been such a big, so yeah, large scales. I love it. Yeah. Um, if I could only paint large scale, I would. <laughs> but I just did a series uh -huh. of tile paintings for that show in Denver that are 12 by four. And they're mm -hmm. really color notes to me. You've seen those little repeated uh -huh. icon writers yes. I do. This is just one writer on textures and colors. And Oh, I bet those so, were very successful. Yeah, snatch, gone. Yeah. And people saying, paint 10 more. Like, you paint 10 more. Yeah. You know? But the real impact is, where'd they go? Those are mine. Yeah. Those were like my color deck. Yeah. Oh, I need those back, you know. Yeah. So uh, in that respect, yeah, paint more. Yeah, it's like Ed Mel. He doesn't give away his little studies. He keeps them. I don't either. I get yeah. asked to, uh, once in a while, I'll take a commission to draw something special for someone. Yes. But I rarely sell a sketch. I never sell a sketch out of my book. Yeah. Better or worse, the girls are going to inherit a bunch of messy books. Yeah. Well, no, this is important. I mean, like the little Dixons we were looking at, those yeah. were his sketches that he used for life. Yeah. For life. Yeah. And it's amazing. You go back and revisit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I actually did a post on Instagram recently said, I wish I knew now what I knew then. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right, I had something then, and imagine I forgot. What, imagine what you're going to know in 20 years. Well, or wish, I, yeah. <laughs> I, wish, I hope it's what I know now. Yeah. That I'd forgotten everything yeah. I'd already learned, you know. So, and what would you tell a young artist as we kind of finish this up? Because, you know, you're mid career, I would call it. Good. Right yeah, no, it's mid career. <laughs> We're not ending it. Okay. Good. No, 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 mid career. Good. And you've been successful. You've managed to really do it all right, quite frankly. Thank you. Yeah. That so a lot. Yeah. So what would you tell artists maybe that are just kind of getting going? They're maybe in, you know, in art school or thinking about art school. Mm, I think to get the mundane stuff out of the way, I mean, really do study some small business management. Yeah. I think that's such a right. important. Get a, the best thing, thing I've done in the last 10 yeah. years, get a bookkeeper. Yeah. And I, I'm thinking I'm seriously about getting some guidance on business management. Yes. Um, because it can be really hard to do this right. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to take that away from any other business. All mm -hmm. businesses could use some support. So learn some small business. You know, be careful, be smart, be calculated. The best you can. Things yes. happen. you got to do what you do. But then once you've got some semblance of that, if you do, go. Yeah. Go, go, go. Um, meet people who've been doing it a long time. Yeah. Get their opinion. Show them your work. Don't take anything personally. 
Yeah, that's a hard one keep, for people. Sometimes. Yeah, it is, and you know, I, Scott has. I was telling you about Scott. He was a teacher at, at Art Center. He's one of the finest figurative painters and, and draftsmen, really on the planet, I think. And he, our very first day, he grilled us for two or three hours. He said, "All right, go get a cup of coffee. Put up your best three drawings on the crit rail and get a, take a break and come back." And of course, we didn't leave. We were all fussing over these horrible right. drawings. None right. of them were any good. What do I put up? What do I put up? We were all stressed to the max. And he came back in all relaxed and he knew what we'd been doing. And he right. said, is this hard? We all said, oh man, this yeah. is hard. He said, does this bother anybody? Oh yeah. This day. He said, you guys should go upstairs and get your money back. <laughs> that was his advice. Like you're in the wrong arena. Yeah. You're doing this. This is what this is. Yeah. So try not to take it personally. Yeah. It's hard, but if you can build some thick skin and then take advantage of what you have at your fingertips and go run through those open doors. Yeah. The worst they can do is tell you no. That's right. Yeah. And don't take the word no, too, and I think, too. Sometimes sometimes dealers can just be brutal. Sure. You know, and it's, that's and it's okay to be honest with an artist, but you don't have to be brutal. Fair and, enough. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. And I've, I've heard dealers that have just crushed people. Yeah. And that doesn't get anyone anywhere. So mind those relationships. Yeah. Work with people who make you feel good. Yeah. Who make you feel like there's a possibility here. And they're not going to work with you if you don't have it. No. Right? So Hopefully not. Yeah, some might. might some be a painful might. experience, yeah. but you're gonna you're gonna find out quickly. Yeah. So go. Yeah. Keep keep doing that. Yeah. Fast as you can. Yeah, I think you're uh to say the business part is very savvy and right on. That may be one of the most important things I've heard of any artist saying is the thing that you need to do because it is critically important. Very important. And it's hard, even when it you're is. doing it right. It it's is. gonna be challenging every step of the way. Yeah. And because it learn, is a business. Learn as much as you can. And le learn to market. Yeah. Don't be afraid to market yourself. No, that's true. And stay on brand. Yep. You are your brand. It's very true. Yeah. 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 Got that hat on. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got my braces on. I always on. forget it's on anymore. I was like, you, you need that? I'm like, oh, sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, I should have taken it off. <laughs> Anything else you want to share before we wrap it up? I don't think so. It's been great fun. Thank cool. you for I'm so happy you were in town and... And when uh, Maeve said, oh, you're coming, I'm like, oh, he would be great for the podcast. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> I really do both of you. Thank you. Yeah, and I like fun. your work a lot. So it was like, I want Thanks. Wanna, I want. I really do. I, I've, I've been in many galleries looking at it in the past. And, well, thank you. Um, that means a lot. Thank you. I appreciate it, you know, that. It is. It's unique, right? That's what we're it, going it, for. It, yeah, it, well, that is. Because yeah. we walk in and go, yeah, that's a Duke. That's, I love yeah. hearing that. And that's very important. That means the world to me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's yeah. very important. Yeah. So I figured there was a cool person behind all well that. i hope i didn't disappoint <laughs> no you didn't yeah, no yeah, yeah no you're yeah. you're a joy Great. for sure all right dude thanks Mark. good i appreciate and it we'll uh go look at some more art i look forward to it all right Great. thank very you very good that was fun.